Welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO of Hydrograph, Stuart Hara. He's joining us today to tell us a bit about his background, what led him to Hydrograph. He's going to give us an overview of the company. He's also going to explain what graphene is and what some of its uses are, the company's strategy. He's going to touch on the hydrogen aspect of the company, as well as what investors should be looking forward to this year with Hydrograph. Hey, Stuart, welcome to The Dive. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, and thank you so much for joining us. So as we do with all of our new guests, could you maybe tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to Hydrograph? Sure. When I think about my background, I break it up into two components. The first part of my career, I worked with large publicly traded companies. I learned what good looks like. I did everything from financial management to business development to eventually running a PL of $1.2 billion that spanned multiple continents. Um, then I went to my second part of my career where I was in private equity and startup. You know, the roll up your sleeve, just get stuff done, right? Titles don't matter. It's just how do I add uh, sustainable value creation with an intense amount of urgency? Um, also that stage, I did three startups. Um, this would be my third. Um, but, uh, so that's, and, and, and this one is actually a great marriage of knowing what good looks like and with a great product and just commercialize the heck out of it. Okay. Now let's talk about Hydrograph. Could you give us the high level overview for the company? Yeah, sure. So Hydrograph, um, has a license global license to a really cool technology and unique way of making graphene, um, where we can make it at an affordable cost basis and consistent high quality graphene, which is unique to our market. Um, so now it gives us opportunity to take a product, um, and revolutionize the materials industry. New materials are constantly being discovered and created, but we seldom hear about graphene. We have to ask, what is graphene in simple terms? What are its commercial uses? And why do you believe it's not widely publicized? Yeah, so so graphene, which uh, was discovered in, in around uh, 2007, the Nobel Prize on it, and it's basically a, a single or a very few layers of a carbon structure. So atom stick, um, and its properties is it's 200 times stronger than steel, more conductive than copper, and also very flexible. Um, so think of graphene like aluminum was when aluminum was first discovered, right? Everybody saw this and said, this is an incredible material. Think of everything we can put it into, but we have a couple of challenges. We can't make a consistent quality. We can't make an economical price, and we have to figure out how to put it into other materials. Hydrograph, solves two of those, we make high quality, consistent, every batch is the same high quality, and we can do it at a cost point that adds, adds a lot of value. That allows us to focus with our customers to figure out how we apply our graphene into the materials. Right? It's, 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 it's chemistry. Um, so it's not just about, you know, uh, grab a yellow and a blue mixed together, you make green. It's not that simple. You have to figure out how to combine the molecules to get the added property that graphene adds. Um, to your question about why don't you hear enough about it or why is it how we use I actually, if you look at the, the cycle of communication when graphene was first discovered, it was all over. Everybody was talking about it. It was called the wonder material. Um, and then it died out. Why did it die out? is because nobody was producing consistent, high-quality graphene. Um, there was a study done a couple of years ago by the Advanced Material, which said something around, you know, less than 50% of the samples had any graphene in them. They were called graphene. Um, and those that did was less than 10% uh, graphene. So that was a huge challenge where people were saying they had graphene. They were really having graphene and, and, and it was 50 layers, 100 layers. It was contaminated. It was actually graphite. We actually produce graphene, identical graphene, in every batch. 
So what are the some of the different uses for graphene? Uh, quite frankly, it really can go into almost anything. What we've decided to focus on are the higher value applications. So we're focused in lubrication, where we could actually reduce the coefficient of friction by over 40%. Um, high volume, high value application, that means all your machines could operate longer. Uh, your, it, the wear on parts is a lot less. So really value creating, which means uh, they'll attribute a lot of value to our product. Um, composites, high-end composites. So think about making things stronger, but lighter be it automotive, be it aerospace, yet very high value uh, and materials. Eventually we'll get into battery. Um, so, you know, we've got recent information that our graphene increases the charging rate of batteries by over 30%, uh, which is huge value. Uh, other folks would use it in textile um, or in concrete. You know, they add value in those areas we believe that those applications require lesser purity graphene, so we'll stay in the higher end, high purity market sectors. With all the different uses that you've mentioned, what do you think will drive the story as you guys roll out? Look, I think ultimately it is those markets, but it's about, for us, and the market of high quality, consistent graphene. No one else, we believe, can produce a consistent 99.8% pure graphene. Uh, the way we produce is actually unique. Um, which we can do it in a less than, we can produce 10 tons a year in less than three by three meter foot uh, space on the floor. No one else in the market can do that. Most graphene is made out of graphite. So think about the whole mining process of pulling graphite out of the ground and then you use a lot of chemicals and high amount of energy to peel graphene out of the graphite. We don't do all that. We take acetylene oxygen, put it in a chamber with a simple spark. We have a reaction and out comes graphene. Again, consistent quality every time. So are those the main advantages of this type of method or is there any other? And, and well, there's an environmental piece, right? Because we're, it's only a, a simple spark, we're not using harsh chemicals that need to be disposed of. We're not using a mass amount of, of energy. We're using the energy inherent in acetylene, uh, which is which acetylene is a molecule which you find everywhere, right? Acetylene is used for welding. And this happens everywhere. So there's sort of sources of acetylene everywhere. It contains a lot of energy. We use its own energy to actually make the product. Uh, other production process, you have to use a lot of external energy, a lot of external chemicals. We're very clean. So what are the plans to commercialize the graphene? So we are well on our way of actually upscaling our production process. So remember earlier I mentioned the three by three meter footprint production unit uh, that's gonna make 10 tons uh, per year. So in the first quarter that will be rolled out um, the value added to customers is we could actually place our production unit at our New York customers and just stack them next to each other to reduce supply chain risk for the customer um, and take very little space. Uh, it's and you know we engage our two new business development folks that we brought on on our team last year that are focused in our key market. So over thirty plus years in lubrication, especially chemicals, composites, and resins. So people who speak the language, folks who left their job because they saw the value we bring in the markets that they're experts in. Uh, so it's working closely with customers. Uh, we have over a do almost a dozen NDAs in place today. Uh, the process is you get an NDA, they start testing. Then we go to a cooperation agreement because they want to put in their material and longevity test it. Um, so think about it, you're putting in cars and airplanes and lubrications. You want to make sure you're getting the properties over the long period of time. Once you pass that, we'll go into long-term supply agreements, which should be in place in 2024. Now, the company also has a hydrogen aspect. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, so it's really neat. So um, we actually discovered the way to make it hydrogen um, by accident. 
um, we were trying other hydrocarbons in our process to try to make graphene. Uh, we took methane and oxygen and did the same detonation process and now came out syngas. Syngas is hydrogen and carbon monoxide with simple off-the-shelf separation technology. You can split them into hydrogen and, and CO. Um, so that is an interesting way of making hydrogen. There's huge applications of hydrogen today. It's actually even growing. It is going to be the fuel of the future. Uh, there, so there's going to be a shortage of supply of hydrogen sources. So we'll continue to develop our hydrogen technology to see if there's a play in, for us in that market. So it creates an interesting optionality in our company that's been focused on graphene, an option to expand into another product. Okay, great. So before we let you go here, what should investors in Hydrograph be watching out for in 2023? So our announcement of the commercial scaled up unit, um, again, no one out there can actually produce as much graphene as we will in a smaller footprint that we're talking about. Um, and, and because of that, it's just, it's modular. Just had customer wants 10 tons, put 10 of these units or one, one unit. They want a hundred tons, put 10 of these units next to each other. Very simple. Again, unique to the process, to the market. Uh, we will be announcing cooperation agreements with customers as we progress from NDA to the next stage of longevity testing. Uh, we will continue to grow our team and, and hopefully get some uh, DOD, DOE funding for developing a hydrogen product, product line. Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us today, Stuart. Beth, thank you very much. Um, we're passionate about what we do here. So talking about Hydrograph is actually the easiest part of my job. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for watching today. If you guys love small cap news, be sure to give us a follow by subscribing below so you can be the first to know about the latest in small cap news. Bye.